question. Just I wanted to paint this. I wanted to paint this for a while now. And so I'm just going to go ahead and paint it and you, you can look along and see. I mean, if you want to paint it, um, it's not the paint along, like I said, like I do on Thursday nights. Come come back on Thursday night and I, I get my um, get my newsletter and you can tell what, I can tell you what we're painting on Tuesdays in my newsletter or on my website. Everything's on my website. And so today we're going to do this little scene um, in, in Switzerland. And we're going to... Um, our center of interest is pretty much this area right here. And then we're going to lead into this way, right into this, into the picture. We're going to start out with the lights, always, always with the lights. And I'm going to keep, I didn't put masking fluid down on the mountains, which I possibly could have done, you know, put the, so that it stays white. But I, can, I think I can go around it. And so let's just get going. I'm going to start out with my big washes, my big light washes. And if you have any questions, um, I think... I can put this up here. This is different for me because I normally don't use Facebook to do um, my things, but um, you know, we're gonna see. <laughs> and hopefully you're seeing this. I think you're seeing this. And, um, and it'll be up there and I'll be putting it on, for those of you who don't do Facebook, I'll be putting it on um, YouTube later on after I get it all, all figured out. And um, I was going to use the Restream stuff at first, but I don't like the fact that it uh, puts a blurry image. You know, unless you're using a phone, it was pretty good. But anybody watching on on like a computer, it was pretty pretty much where it, where I can do YouTube and Facebook at the same time. It was pretty blurry on, on a computer screen, on a bigger computer screen. So I don't like that, and so I decided not to use that and just do Facebook, and then later on I put it on. I'll put it on my YouTube channel and then you can watch it there. And then it's just on Sunday mornings because most people are, you know, on, not on YouTube as much as they are on Facebook. And so I thought that I would just use Facebook on Sunday mornings. And since the weather's getting kind of not nasty out there, <laughs> I'm staying inside a little bit more. <laughs> and so here I'm going to put some nice blues in here. And I'm going to put the sun right in this area and let it shine right there. I am going around my mountains, which I normally don't do, but because I need some of the parts being white, I'm kind of going around that. And I wet the surface real quickly. I wet the surface and I'm going to make this a really brighter blue in the front here. And as it goes towards the sun, I'm going to try to make that, make that nice and light. And one thing I realized with watercolor and for anybody that's new, with watercolor, you don't have to blend. It's one of those mediums that you don't have to blend anything because the water does the blending for you. And it's um, really hard for some people to understand that. <laughs> like they try to uh, blend the material, the um, pigment, and they try to make it blend together so it's nice and smooth. Well, you don't do that. You just let the water, the water does it for you. If you put enough water down, you just let the pigment float into the water. That's how my whole thing, everything's called float your pigment because basically that's what you're doing. You're taking pigment and floating in the water and that gets you the nice, the nice soft edges. And then if you want some edges that are a little bit harder, use more thicker pigment. And so I'll use a little bit thicker pigment when I want to get over here by the clouds and um, make it stop so it doesn't bleed as far. So I'm using ultramarine blue. I'm using some cerulean ultramarine and peacock blue in my sky and I'm just going to go down here and I also sometimes use white in my skies you know so I have titanium white which I can sometimes put in there too and this part up here I want to keep really bright and I'll make it look like the sun is really shining really bright right there and um, you can even put in like little you know light streams like that by just pulling out some of the paint you know like it looks like it, the stream is running this way and I'll probably even soften up to a point where you don't even see that and over here watch this I'm gonna use a little bit of white just so that you know again if you if you submit to certain watercolor societies you can't you do this so um, but um, if you just want to make a beautiful cloud with white you can do that too just don't submit this painting to like a TWSA and see I'm just putting that in there like that and keep it nice and dark on top here and again let the water the water will um, soften all those edges I'm making a really beautiful blue sky and I cannot see if anybody's asking questions hold on one second let me just make my window size a little bit smaller so just in case somebody's asking something I can then maybe answer you
Luann. Yes, you don't have to watch right now, and it's always going to be there. I always figure you can watch it later. You don't have to watch it live. But if you um, are here, thank you for staying by <laughs> and just watching. Here I'm going to put a little bit of white with blue in it, and so that's a little bit thicker so you can get another layer. Here i got to make sure that the water's not too... Here it's puddling right here a little bit, so you got to watch out that the, the watercolor doesn't puddle like and have more water. You want to evenly distribute your water. That's one thing about when you're doing it wet into wet, that you do, if you want, do want it soft, that you make all the water about the same wetness across the paper, because then it'll evenly make it really nice and smooth. And so and let's get some more streams of light coming through here. I'm just going to take them out real lightly with my brush. I take my brush and I rub it on my towel, which is on my tabletop here. And I'm just going to take a little bit of this um, and I'm just going to do a little bit of like the sun is shining really brightly through there and you get some sun rays. I remember my teacher, Irving Shapiro, said that that doesn't happen. But that's one thing I must disagree with him. <laughs> I've seen sun rays out there, you know, and um, so... He always said that that wasn't something that you really, it doesn't really work or something. I, I kind of forget what that lesson was, but um, I actually kind of like it. So that's one of the lessons that I, <laughs> you take what you can for each teacher. Like you may not even like anything I do. Just take what you like and apply that to your painting. And um, if you don't like certain things, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do certain things like adding white. Like a lot of people don't like to add white to their watercolors. I don't mind it. And so I do it. All right, so there's our sky. Let me get this little bit of this. Make a little cloud here. You also make clouds by pulling out some of the paint into your brush because it absorbs back into your brush. So there's a nice little sky. You know, again, really bright right here. The sun's right there. I'll put a little bit darker cloud, a little bit thicker paint right across here. I kind of like this little bit of... Um, and actually, I also like to add a little purple into my sky. Like underneath the... Like if there's a um, cloud, underneath the cloud, it's usually shadowed. A little bit and so I'm gonna do that across there a little bit again now it's starting to dry a little bit and I probably should wet it a little bit but I'm gonna keep it keep it like this all right so there we have our little cloud in the sky and now we're gonna go right into our, our our mountains basically come working forward though I should do my big areas now we're just gonna go right into this right into the clouds I mean right into the mountains and um, though this line is wet still, so let me just, while that's drying a little bit, I'm going to go right down here and do my big washes of color for my for my foreground, the land that's in the foreground here. Because it's kind of greenish and the, and the pathway is kind of gray. So we'll do that. Hey, yeah, you guys in Syracuse, I'm sure, and also Buffalo, boy, boy, it's amazing how much snow you guys are getting. You know, we had snow yesterday, and it didn't stick, so we're getting snow, but it's not sticking. But thanks, thanks for stopping by here, guys. And so here we're going to put a little bit of the greenery. And I'm doing the big areas, again, the big areas of lights, so I'm kind of establishing my lights. Make it kind of a green. And my green, I don't have a green except for this, like, um, composed green. By putting yellow and my cronacinum gold together with blues, that'll make my greens. And I'm just going to take and put my light greens. And these are just the light ones that we're going to show underneath. When I go back in here with my lights, or with my darks, then I can establish what the other greens are going to look like and what this dark area is, actually. So this is just the light, just the light areas. And some of this may be done. You know, I may keep it just the way it is. If I put the lights in, if I don't need any darks in that area, then that'll be done. But I'm going to do a difference. And this person is a little bit darker, so I'm going to go right over them. And then just kind of come in here. Do a nice dark through here. And then we're going to... It's a little bit darker. It's still my middle tone, so I'm still doing my lights. And this path should be a little bit more, I usually use for path if it's like a beige, I usually use orange and purple together and like a, um, a, a lavender and I put that in together with the, with the orange. Orange and lavender make a nice gray, a really nice gray for a path. 
So lavender is kind of a really neat gray color that you can use that you can, anytime you want something gray, um, lavender is, is your friend. <laughs> and I mix that with orange to get a nice gray. This is really beautiful way to uh, make your lights. If you just need a little bit of color in there and violet lavender is always, I always call it the magic color anyways, cause it's just, it's like the gray that is beautiful. <laughs> and so here, so Holbein makes a great lavender. I'm not sure what other color companies make um, lavender. It does have white in it, so you can't use it too thick. I use it very watered down and so that it becomes transparent because that's one thing you want to do is make sure it's transparent. Hey, Gloria from Waco, Texas. Oh, it's probably nice down there. It's probably nice and warm. <laughs> So here, now this guy a uh, light, but I'm gonna get a few more greens in there. And again, when you're putting in certain, anything that's a little bit darker, it depends on how far you want it to bleed. And make sure the less you want it to bleed, the more pigment you use. So dab down your brush onto the, onto the, onto the towel and just pick up more pure pigment. You know, try to get the color pure and thick, and then you have the water down, and then you can, then you can kind of direct it a little bit better because then you can go in here and it'll stop. It won't bleed all over everywhere. And so I can make these little transitions of color and value um, so that it just looks like, you know, what you see in the picture, basically grasses that have a little bit light and dark wells in them and little hills. And, and so it also puts a bunch of different colors in there and textures. I can get different textures and hopefully the texture from the pigment granulates and so then you get nice granulation too. Granulation is a great thing when you have it wet into wet and it does it on its own. Again softening is as is all done on its own. That's something you don't have to do. You can just let the pigment soften itself and except where it's dry like right there it's dry already. So there I have to re-wet it. I'll just take my brush re-wet it slightly and just soften the edge. So all the edges don't have to be totally um, or the area doesn't have to be wet to get the soft edge. You can also do it afterwards and basically put your brush in water and then re-wet it. And so here's still my do, still doing my lights, still doing my colors. The colors are usually um, what you do in your lights. You know, you establish your color pattern when you're when you're working your light areas. So I'm not thinking about. Um, the value pattern yet per se. I'm worrying about the colors. I want to make sure my colors, my color palette is what I'm working on right now. And so, and pretty much blue and orange is going to be the main focus of my color scheme per se. It's going to be, you know, blue, a lot of blues and a lot of orange, even though it's green, it's like kind of like an orange. I have a lot of orange in this yellow. And so that's kind of like where I'm going towards. It's more of a blue green, blue orange compliments. This is a big rock up here and um, it's lighter than the, than the surface, but I think I'm gonna have to make it darker because it doesn't read, it will read if it's lighter, it won't read as rocks. So I'm gonna make it a little bit darker rocks and maybe kind of make them brownish or grayish brown. Again, grays, I can use some of my lavender and I can make these a little bit darker rocks, I think, or boulders. I should say they look more like a boulder here in the corner. Um, uh, Gloria asked if I ever show my studio. No, not the way it looks right now. Not with the mess <laughs> that I have going on. I will show that one day when I clean it up. <laughs> I will definitely show my studio. Right now it is a disaster. It's, um, I have so many things going on and it's, it's very messy, very messy. I can barely walk through it. It's so messy. <laughs> one day I will show you to you though. I have to set it up so I can, you know, show you guys too. So I can turn our camera around. I got a big television screen right in front of me too, which I really don't use anymore. So I gotta get that out of here. All right, and so now we're gonna, we are going to, what are we gonna do? Now we're going to do the, um, so that's pretty much my lights. You know, I've got my lights pretty much. Let me get a few more darks here. I'll try to do this quickly here, guys. I don't want you to spend all morning here. And even when you're watching it, people like to see it. They're really fast, done fast, so that they can get down with your day. And so we're going to try to do that. 
Try to get it done at least in half an hour. I'm trying to get this done at. And I forgot what time I started it, so we'll see. Here, I'm going to put a little bit of darks in here. Again, these are middle tones. The middle tones, when it comes to my light and dark pattern, basically everything is light except for the mountains and our, our traveler here, our hiker. And so everything else is light. You know, so this, all these areas are light. And so now I'm going to go and do my darks. And I didn't do my lights in here because I wanted that to keep that, uh, keep that white, a lot of the parts of the mountain. And then I will go into the mountain slowly and surely and get the look of the nice, beautiful snow that's on top there. I'm going to wipe down my palette a little bit here. That's probably the only thing I use paper towel for. <laughs> I probably should just use a corner of my towel to get that. All right, so now let's go into our blues and our mountain because the background is kind of drying up, I think, now. And so we're going to go in with a blue and a purple. And so I'm going to get the lighter part of the mountains first, the lighter part of the mountain. So that means like the snow that's in shadow is what I'm going get getting right now. Not the dark parts, not the dark parts. This is basically, again, every time with watercolor, you go light to dark. And so I'm getting the light parts of the snow. And this is about the light parts. I mean, it looks like it's a darker, but it's not. It'll be darker blue than that. Leaving a little bit of this white alone. And so I'll be going over this. And this goes down and is kind of like a, a medium blue. And I'll put a little purple in there too, just to kind of dull it down a little bit. And then I'm going to come over here. And then I'm just going to leave some of the white. Again, I'm still working the the light part of the mountains. I'm not going to the dark parts yet. I can cover up those parts with a dark blue. And so I don't have to worry about too much of this where what I'm happening here. Like this line right there, I don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to worry about like keep my whites. And I could have used masking fluid for that, but I decided not to and just kind of go around it. It makes it a little bit slower when it comes to the painting process. But um, now this is darker again. Up here, it's dark again. See, it's in the shadow. And I always look where your sun is coming from. And actually, <laughs> I put the sun over here when it were, actually was over here. Because um, look at the shadow on the person. Um, it's this way. And so I kind of switched it around. I put this person in there. And the sun, I also moved over here. And it was actually in the photograph, it was over here. So it's kind of not true to reality. Uh, because I switched things around a little bit. But you decide then. And then I have to just change things up so that the sun is hitting this side of the mountain. And hitting a little bit of that. So I'm going to make this part. Again, this is my mediums and my lights. I'm keeping some of the white of the paper to show the, the nice curvature and stuff and the, and the snow that's up there in the mountains. And this is the shadowed snow. I'm actually doing the shadowed snow. I'm not doing the dark parts of the mountain yet because that comes with that comes with um, with the darks. When I put the darks in that, it'll come the, the land itself, the dirt. Now I'm just doing the snow, basically. Shattering the snow in some parts and leaving it alone in other parts. Now this up here is very much going to have to be, let's see, this side is a little bit darker. And then I'm going to put a little bit of this snow right there. I'm just, oh, what I worry about when I do this is to get rid of too much white. I have to make sure I don't get too, rid of too much white. I don't wear, worry about the dark, dark parts because I can go right into that. And it's me covered again. I just want to make sure I don't lose too much of the white of the paper. Because you can't get the white of the paper back once you go over it. So I'm just being a little bit slower with that so that I don't lose that part. Okay, I think I've got pretty much. And then this will be, you know, the, the light parts of the dark parts this blue. So when I go back in, this will be the, the darker part of the dark part or the light parts of the dark part. Oh boy. I'm sure you didn't get that. And so here we're going in and we are going to put the darks in right after I get this done. All right. And so I think we got pretty much all our middle tones and lights already accomplished here in this little patch back here. One day I got, I've got to do a workshop here in this part of the country. I mean, this is just gorgeous, gorgeous. I was in Switzerland once a long, long time ago, and um, I thought it was the most, the most beautiful country. I hadn't gone into the mountain parts like this is in the, 
very mountain mount, mountainy parts. Um, I was yes in mountains, but not those big ones where there's like you know the villages in in the valleys. You know that's beautiful. So now I'm gonna get my my round brush and go in with my big darks. Now it's like time for my darks. So let's go in with a nice, nice, thick, dark, dark blues. Prussian blue I'm using here, a little violet, dark violet. And I'm gonna establish like where my darkest dark is gonna be. And it's gonna be right here by these buildings over here. And so I'm just gonna put them down real lightly, real small here, just to kind of get myself knowing that that's gonna be my darkest dark and I can go lighter from there. It's always good to establish your darkest dark and know where that's going to be and then regulate everything from that dark. Because then I know that that's going to be the darkest dark and that's my center of interest, this area right here. And so we can go right through this and make trees here. Bleed this up into the mountains. I'm going to make it a little bit softer here at the moment so, I can, so it doesn't have a weird edge on it. And I'm negative painting the land now too and so I'm going around like building tops and I'm basically negative painting the light, the light source, the light areas, the building right there. And now we're going to go in. And so this is a really nice negative painting of the, put a little green in this, little greenish blue, and this will be like little pine trees. And it looks like there's a little valley that goes down in here. It's so weird because if you look at the, the, the distance, it's so far away. And so you really, a tree, this is like about a thousand trees, right? That little area, you know, it's just, it's like, it looks like it's like you make it like just a few trees. No, this is like, this is a whole village down here. And that's how far away it is. And it's so, so far away. So... Um, you can do a little bit of texture down there to make it look like that's like a village. And then I make it a little bit darker. And as I'm going up, I'm going to get a little bit grayer. And I'm going to like lose the edges. We're, we're talking about lo lost edges. And we're going to lose some of the edges. Here we're going to um, negative paint the light. Because that's basically what's happening. And it really is kind of weird. Because I, since I put the sunlight here, um, this probably wouldn't happen exactly like this. Because this side of this hill would probably be a little bit darker. But... Artistic license which says you can do anything you want. So that's what I did. <laughs> do anything you want. So I'm going to put this in here. And also, don't be afraid of putting other colors into this area because it wouldn't just be that one color. I put a little orange in here, you know, a little dabbing to make it look like maybe that's buildings or whatever in that area. It's a lot smaller things than it actually looks. So I'm going to put all this. Now we're going to go with a nice big area, put some violet in there. And we're going to go up here. I always watch Sunday morning and then you normally do that when I'm not doing plein air. When I'm doing plein air, I'm already outside looking at them, but I hate missing that program. That's my favorite program to watch. It gets all about art, you know, and all kinds of things. This week was about food. And so it's very, very interesting, you know, all about food and different food. And we're just going to go here dark. And so it gets me inspired to go out and paint. And hopefully this inspires you too to get your, you know, you can paint at any time. You don't have to go outside all the time. You can go inside your studio, also paint and just get, get, do a lot of painting. That's how you get good. It's just do a lot of painting. Yes, my yeah, my 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 picture. This um, paper is taped down. And yeah, you thought my studio was organized? No, I can't, like I said, I can't show you my studio. <laughs> it's just too bad. <laughs> one day I will though. I'm gonna clean it up, and one day we'll we'll show you the studio. Hopefully sooner than later. I do a lot of work for a company in Dallas. Um, I do a lot of um, paintings and stuff for commission wise for Dallas and, and they go into hotels all over the world. I'm mostly in the United States. So I think is what they, where they send my, my work and it's a lot of abstracts and a lot of other stuff, but 
I actually um, don't really show that right at the moment. It's just because it's it's pretty much just almost like my advertising job that I was in for so many years. It's not my ideas. Um, it's what the, whatever the designer wants. And so it's not kind of, to me, not my work really. Um, I'm just filling a, a void and I need I need to have a job. And it's with that's what actually this company helped me out a lot when it came with COVID and I lost my gallery. So um, I do a lot of work for them and it's really fun. It's really fun seeing, doing other kind of work, like abstracts and things that I normally don't do for myself, but it's helped me a lot to see that there's all different kinds of art. And so here you see I'm putting the darks in and this is just creating the dark areas. I'm gonna put a little bit of purple, making it not so vibrant, the blue. And as it comes forward, you can get more vibrant, the blues. And so I'm pretty much copying what I see in the photograph because it's like, I'm trying to figure out where the, here there's a little part of this mountain that's like in the dark right here. And it's, it's a little peak. I mean, it's just the Alps out there are just so gorgeous. And so we're going to break this up a little bit with some lights and darks. And then just sure, sure to get that peak in there. That's the, the, so nice that peaks. You know, and it gets darker on the side here. Coming, comes down. And if you need to, like I said before, if you need to use masking fluid to keep things white or go in there and draw it really really a lot and go slow that's fine you can go slow and if you want to make it look exactly like what you see there that's fine just take your time i go in pretty fast so it's not probably gonna be exactly like it is there all the peaks and stuff and that's up to you a lot of people like to be really loose this is a little bit tight actually you know i'm doing it kind of tighter than i normally work here on this side of the hill i'm gonna put a little bit darker than it actually is the sun's coming this way so i'm gonna take and put this side a little bit darker like and then also that the snow is shining through there slightly and put a little bit of see some is snow and some is land so the land if you make it one part dark then you it, it states right away when you the viewer looks at it it's like oh yeah the lighter lighter blue is possibly snow anything that's a little bit darker is possibly land so that's way then you can just know that when you're putting a dark in that's going to be land and then if you put in lighter blue that's all snow through here put some land going down to this area I mean what a gorgeous path can you imagine walking this path oh, unbelievable beautiful so I'm not sure why I start up there but I'm just gonna put some of this down here I just as I'm looking at the picture I'm thinking put some of this down here to make it look realistic that's more the detail stage but I just felt like I needed to put that down there <laughs> All right, let's get back to our mountains. Let's get this done. We got to get done half hour, but I'm sure I'm past half hour already, right? <laughs> so give yourself time. You don't have to do a rush. I, I tend to work really fast because of my my years and years of being a storyboard illustrator downtown. I used to have to get all of my storyboards done within a certain time so that the client could do a, take it to the meeting, basically. And so you get kind of good at... Um, your time and how much time it takes you to do things and so that's how come i do things pretty quickly and i i know exactly how to do it but on sunday morning i don't give myself a time limit i just pretty much figure hey i'm usually outside plein air painting i want to do that um, but then when i'm in my studio um it's, it's nice in here <laughs> when it's not so cold outside it's pretty cold out there and it was 21 degrees yesterday and i think it's probably that out there right now and I can paint, I was thinking of painting from my car and be sitting in the car too, but I haven't found a spot. I've got to find some nice spots too. I know that today the plein air group in Chicago is down at the Navy Pier the drawing and painting. And so I have to maybe join them one time too and get down there and, and join them to do the plein air. So here we're going to go and make some of these darkers now. So now that's my details, right? And so you see these little buildings and stuff way in the distance and get that in there. Here we have, as you come forward, I'm just going to get a little bit more details. So I'm in my detail stage now. I'm at the, at the point where now it's details. 
The background is pretty much almost all done. I'm going to get a few more darks in here. And now let's just go into our foreground and get our foreground done and we're done. So here I'm going to put some um, on the edge here. Like this little, I'm using the side of my brush, you know, so you can get texture with the side of your brush. And you just kind of take it across the paper. I'm using um, Stonehenge Aqua Paper, the cold press. And so it's got a little bit of texture to it. So if you take and brush your, uh, you take your brush across it really quickly, um, you pick up a little texture. And so since the sun's on this way, we're going to make the shadow go straight back behind her instead of. Okay, and so we're going to make, instead of going across, like putting across, like because the sun was over here and the, and the picture that the shadow's going this way, I'm taking it where the sun is. The sun's right there. So I'm going straight back with the shadow. You can also do that with some of these weeds that are up there. You can just throw some shadows on the street. If you want texture on the street, like, because this looks like rocks, I'm just going to take my brush across the side of it and just kind of just scrub it, like dry brush it across. Not much paint in there at all. And just maybe even tap it down so it doesn't get too dark. Or just tap even a little bit here and there. Basically, you take it across the, across the path a little bit. It's almost as like it's water now, though, because it kind of looks like it's wet and reflection. That's how you get reflections, too. But it's not a reflection. It's a shadow. So a little bit of, a little bit confusing there. All right. So let's just go in and do this rock here. And then we'll do, we'll do our little hiker. And here's the rock. Rocks, when you do boulders, just remember the tops are light and the sides are dark. And the, and the crevices are the darkest. And so... Depending on how texture you want to make it, you can also do the same thing where you can spatter it. You can um, like go up and down like this, and to get texture, there's many ways you can scrape it with a credit card. You know, there's all those ways of getting things looking like a certain way textures, but not about that today. So we're just gonna just kind of tapping it down, and then the back side is gonna be nice and dark. I don't want too much of a triangle in the corner either, so I watch out for that. There's like a little, just a little bit of texture right here, just to show the little waves of different things happening. There is a bench right here, which I'll be when I do the person, which I'm gonna do right now. So I take my little, my um, rigger brush, and I'm just gonna really quickly look at the picture close up and see there's a red coat blue jeans looks like and so we're just gonna put those on so we'll start out with blue jeans always lighter to dark even when you're doing things small and now it's like take your time because you have to make it look just like whatever it's not it's not a gesture like you do gestured um people and that's where you just basically you know i call them bob's blobs or david's dabs where i put down characteristic people they call them and that's not this because this you have to Really make it look like the person or make it look like whatever that, that you drew. So spend a little bit more time um, because it's part of your center of interest. So you don't want to go in there and just gesture it. You actually want to make it look like whatever the person is doing. And so this person's hiking and I gave her a walking stick. And then we put the hat on her. Let's see, the hat was white. And so that being a white hat, that means it can shadow with any color. It's going to keep it a little light and just shadow the back of it. And then because I have pencil lines, I'll keep them. That way it'll look like a hat because of the pencil lines too. So you don't have to get rid of a pencil line just because you think it's, you know, it's messy. No, sometimes it helps it out to make it the shape look like whatever it is. <laughs> hey, Aaron. Um... <laughs> hey, Tim. Yeah, you guys, um, yeah, it's, um, <laughs> you can definitely imagine it. So here we go. And this is actually Tim and Aaron's mom. <laughs> so they're walking this path right here. And so I'm just gonna put a little stick right there. I don't know if she normally doesn't use a walking stick, I don't think. But um And it's a pink coat, huh? It's a pink. I'll oh, say so I'll put a little bit more pink in there. There we go. Now it's a pink, a pink coat. 
And then the, the street itself looks more like a river now because I didn't do it dark enough. Um, so I'm going to make it a little bit darker. Put a little shadow underneath the bench here. Hey <laughs> Tim, nice. I can imagine walking this path. You know, you, I'm not sure what path this is or where in Switzerland this is, but Tim would know. Actually, probably this is a this is probably taken by Tim. <laughs> so let's see. We'll put some seeds in there. I get a little more texture onto this and make my, my I'll make my shadows a little bit darker on the path here. And then I'm gonna give this path a little bit more texture because it doesn't look it looks like she's walking down the down a stream. And so I'm gonna put a little bit more texture in here. Some more texture on the path. And what am I doing? I'm just dry brushing. I'm taking a little bit of paint and just using the side of the brush. And I'll even tap it a little bit to get it a little bit more dirty, basically, basically putting pebbles into the street. All right, and then we got this little electric pole here. It looks like uh, I'm not sure where this is going to, this electric pole, but it seems like there's just one there. And then I'll do a little bit of hut right there. I'm putting a little color back here by the buildings in the distance. And let's see, I think the land here is just a little bit too light. It'd be nice to have that just slightly darker. And then, so I'm going to take my big round brush and just make it a little bit darker. I didn't get, when I get my first wash, I didn't get much pigment in there or enough um, color so I'm just going to take it and make it a little bit darker a little bit darker a little bit more and then I can also lighten the tops of it and then they also make it look See, that's just wetting it and then with color and it's still going to be soft edged it's not floating as much but um, you have to watch out when you put another color on top of another just make sure that you put enough water that's floating still and that way you'll keep it from looking overworked is that you make sure it's dry and then you can just let things leave it alone let it float the pigment again because you can agitate what's underneath let it float and it'll become nice and edge edge will become nice and soft again all right and i think that is about it guys So I'll be putting this on YouTube for all those that um, don't do Facebook. I know some people don't do Facebook, so you wouldn't be here anyway, so you don't know I'm doing it. But I've been doing these Sunday morning um, Sunday morning paint, paint outs, demonstrations. Um, normally I'm outside doing plain air, but again, it was too cold out there and I wasn't going to get out there. <laughs> and I, was just, and I, I would have missed my, um, my favorite show, the Sunday morning, which always inspires me to do some painting. And again, this morning was about food. So if you if you want to see what foods around the world and what they eat for Thanksgiving, or um, that was a really good episode of Sunday morning all about food. And here we're gonna do one more thing. There. Okay, I think make this a little bit darker right here. So, you know, this is the center of interest. So anything you do here, you can do a lot of it, and you don't worry about this area right in there. That's the areas where you want everything to be the best. Put a little bit of this. And this is a little bit darker up here. Okay. 
take the tape off and show you what it looks like without the tape, and we're done. Oh, how come this tape is so hard to get off today? And this was actually done, and normally I do 300 pounds, but for some reason this morning I did it on 140. But um, if you wet the surface of a 140 pound, it doesn't buckle on you. So if you ever want to use 140 pound paper, just spray the back with your uh, with the water and you'll be fine. So there you have it, guys. Hope everybody has a really nice Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon and a whole Sunday. <laughs> And uh, my paint along this week will not be on Thursday since it's Thanksgiving. We will not have it on Thanksgiving, of course. Um, so it's Wednesday night. And so Wednesday night, and I'm thinking we're probably going to be painting a lantern. Uh, something like that. So check my website and come back on Thursday, or Wednesday, 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 Wednesday night for a paint along. And um, we'll see you then. All right. Have a great Sunday morning. Bye-bye.